What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 31 and today we are returning with two more big games with Aston Villa plus the transfer deadline day as well which I know you guys love and I do as well so let's just dive straight into it today our first two games just like the only two games uh, are our final two games of January as we take on Newcastle United at home in the FA Cup third round replay after our boring stalemate at St James's Park and then the second game today comes just four days later as we take on Stoke City at home that was was the first win in a month away from home and that was a really big win after no wins on the road since October so taking them on at home hoping to beat them back to back this season in the same month of course transfer deadline there as well uh, there should be an academy update too and uh, and yeah we'll also find out our opponents for the fourth round of the FA Cup if we get through today's third round replay so lots to get through today hopefully some more signs as well after what has so far been a dramatic transfer window but the first thing is a game it's Newcastle United FA Cup third round replay Let's get the win. Let's get to the fourth round. And as we jump straight into the game as well, this is going to be quite an interesting match because unlike at St. James's Park, we are not starting with the four at the back system. No, that was a terrible idea because the 3-5-2 is how we play and hopefully the backup brigade will get the job done. Uh, it is a fully weakened lineup for the game. 11 changes after our famous 5-2 victory over Manchester City on the weekend. So Galini in goal, but three of Gillespie, Fry and James Chester were in the armband with Adams and Lewis, the DM partnership, which I really like. Uh, Green's on the left, Young is on the right, Dempsey's our cam and up top together Rian Brewster and Fernando Torres so decent team despite it being a fully weakened one but I feel like we are the underdogs tonight and I think we might be going out but it's the FA Cup third round replay it's Newcastle United and let's just at least have a better game than the one at St James's Park that was terrible Clark. it was definitely the worst if not one of the worst games of the series that, that first tie against these boys it was awful I, I struggled Genius. to create a highlights package for you really it really was that bad but um, we are the underdogs tonight, no doubt about it. They've got the better team out there, I'd say, anyway. But if we do get a chance, we're going to have to take it. We didn't do that in James's Park, got very little and didn't take any. So if we do get a chance tonight and do want to go through, going to have to make sure we're clinical in front of goal. That's going to be a key theme, really. Take your chances with Newcastle winning an early free kick. And Gignac, who did go close to scoring uh, in the first match against them, whips it into the centre. And it's flipped on by Rolando Ahrens. And Newcastle United take an early lead. Ten minutes in, we see a goal in the replay. And it's Ahrens heading in the free kick. And it's 1-0. Product of the Newcastle United Academy. Rolando Ahrens wins it in the air and heads it over Galini and into the back of the net. It's an awful start for Aston Villa. And, I mean, I will say it once again. We kept a clean sheet against these boys in the last episode, but we just, we can't defend. It doesn't matter what back three we've got out there. doesn't matter what system we're playing for the most part. doesn't matter what goalkeeper we're using. doesn't matter what opponent we're facing. Look, Socrates can't come in quickly enough, in, in my opinion. We need that veteran to join us next season and really shore up our back line and introduce quality to it. We're just not good enough at the back. Here's that goal scorer on the ball, Genial. finding the guy that got the assist down the right-hand side. He holds off Good the 16-year-old Toby from. Lewis, and now Perez on the ball, turns and finds Gignac. Back to Marino. Good tackle by Tyler Excellent Adams, though, and Young play. gets Under it clear. Torres to Brewster. And maybe a chance on the break here. Rian on the ball, trying to get around the ex Aston Villa defender, Kieran Clark. We'll play advantage there, referee. Thank you very much. Andre Green in to Dempsey. Dempsey... Fernando Torres, yes, Fernando Torres makes it Aston Villa 1, Newcastle 1. He's retiring at the end of the season, but I really wish he'd reconsider that and stay for another year. Not too many goals this season, but not a bad goal to game ratio for the veteran Spanish striker. Dempsey into Torres, two boys hanging up their boots come the end of the year. And oh, we'd love them to stay on for our third season. But it's 1-1 and we're back on level terms. That will look for the first half. Still tied at 1 1. 45 minutes to go as things stand. Set for extra time and penalties, which we rarely ever see in FA Cup ties uh, in, uh, in one of my saves. But at the moment, we're uh, we're doing okay. It's not been a bad first half. 45 minutes to go. And I'm pretty sure if we get another chance, we can take it and win this game in normal time. There was a Perez through the gap and what a ball to find Christian Atsu. And oh, flag stayed down. It should have been 2 1. Atsu took it on first time off the post and behind for a goal kick. Can either side win this game? Game, or are we set for an extra 30 minutes? The corner for Newcastle with 15 minutes to go. Adams coming off the Yaya Torre as Newcastle try and keep the pressure on and find a winning goal. Rolando Aaron who scored their first, whips it in, and Kieran Clark's header goes just wide the post. That would have been a story had Clark won it. One of the former Aston Villa defenders still won one. This game's surely set for extra time, but there may still be one late twist in the tail. 
Well, I think that is going to do it. And there well, indeed is the final whistle. It finished up. all square at St James's Park after an hour and a half worth football. Level. And it does here at Villa Park as well. This time a score draw though. Now we're heading into extra time. And for my change at the break, I'm going to bring on Pajac for Young. Because right now our wide midfielders slash wing backs just aren't tracking back on defence. And because of the fact that they are players who want to get forward... That really can't come as much of a surprise. So, yeah, Padgett is going to come with a bit more defensive stability down at the right-hand side. And I've got to say, I like this kid a lot. I really do. Six foot can play centre-back in this team. has done so a couple of occasions. And uh, a decent little player to have a as a freebie. Now, and one of the reasons why I always say, at the start of every single season, ability, go into the free agents pool and time. see what you can find. Because normally there's one or two decent little players in there. Clark into Cy there. Newcastle really are pressing now and pushing for that winning goal. Perez to Yossalu. Spaniards linking up. Aaron Perez just wide the post. I can't believe Newcastle haven't retaken the lead. They've been a much better team in this game. We're lucky to still be tied. Players absolutely shattered out there as we're still tied at 1-1 as the second half extra time gets underway. And Bemba's poor first touch is cut out by Pajac. And Lewis will feed it through to Dempsey. Now Pajac on the ball. The free agent right back playing right midfield in this team. Can he turn Brian and get inside? It's still Pajac. It's great work. It's brilliant work by Pajac. Who crosses and Joel Turner arriving. Scuffs it into the turf and puts it just wide the post. Still 1-1. We're going to penalties. No one can score. Fry's header. Dempsey's flick on. Yaya Torre to Joel. Turner down the left is there still time for a late winning goal here I see Lewis in space I see Padgett in even more space I'll give it to him again oh it's great work it's great work it's a great cross and this time we get someone on the end of it that can find the back of the net and it's the kid my childhood crush Rian Brewster that makes it Aston Villa 2 Newcastle 1 and surely gives us the winner right before a penalty shootout for Padgett what a change heading into extra time he's been brilliant down that right hand side lovely first touch perfect cross and Rian heads it home to break Newcastle hearts as we go in front right to the death Aston Villa 2 Newcastle 1 what a signing he has been and you may have seen Joel Turner as well as if to say thank you very much Rian you let me off the hook there because that will do it final score at Villa Park we come from behind to get the win in extra time Aston Villa 2 Newcastle 1 and no surprise prizes that the teammates go and celebrate with that young free agent right back Pajat who came off the bench to get the assist and help us win the game what a win much better game than the one at St James's Park no doubt about it should have been more goals in this one really the finishing wasn't the best despite there being three goals in total but it was quite an even game could have gone either way just came down to who was more clinical and that was us but for man of the match he only played half an hour but I will give it to the free agent right back Lovre Pajat the young Croatian that shows great potential if you remember very recently, he came to us and said, you know, you're not playing me enough. You're not fulfilling the promises you gave me when I signed for the club. Maybe I should have listened. Maybe we should play him more. Win the game by two goals to one. Are into the fourth round. Come on. Uh, we've just got the tournament prize money email. So that should mean that we will see our opponents for the FA Cup fourth round. And also Dale Fry has a bid here from Watford. It's a big one as well. £14.8 million from the Hornets. We could get upwards of around 17 to 18 million, I'd suggest, but he's only 21 years old, 76 rated, and to be honest, I like him a lot. And whilst we have struggled defensively this season, we know that in the future, he, along with our other boys in the back line, are going to be really good. So forget it. He's staying here. Fry is not going anywhere. And we're just going to find out our opponents for the FA Cup fourth round as well. And it's going to be, dun, 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 Fulham away at Craven Cottage. Uh, last season, we drew that game 0-0. Uh, it was quite a tough one. We were lucky to get a draw as well. Uh, so, okay, it's, uh, it's championship opposition in the fourth round, but Fulham away won't be an easy test at all. And Arsenal just signed Iron Robin for £30 million as well. Don't you just love career mode transfers? Some of which are absolutely wacky, but uh, Arsenal signing Robin, that, that, that would be a really interesting fit for Arsenal. Can he add to the goals he scored already this season? He's already the top scorer in the league. What a match. And it's live. And as we now jump into the second and final game of today's episode, we are playing host to Stoke City, who, of course, we did beat uh, in the first game of 2020. Uh, back to our normal league lineup for the game, 3-5-2, but 11 changes, of course, uh, including Pepe Reina, of course, now taking the armband with no James Chester. And I'm targeting another three points here. It'll be three wins in three in all competitions, a decent little mini run for us, and also back-to-back -back wins at home in the league as well after our thumping 5-2 win against Pep's boys last week. 
weekend. So yeah, second and final game today before the transfer window shuts. It's Stoke City, let's get the win. Well, the hosts come into this game with some very good statistics for their record here at home. And it is uh, actually unparalleled in the league at the moment. So hard to take points off this team at home. Nine wins in 11 games. Terrific stuff. Barkley, your ball mate. Keep it in play. Well done, son. And now through to Grealish. And in space is Fabian Delph. Ah, oh, the pass was poor. And that's a shame, too, because Delph, as we know, can score them from range. And I was going to try and play him through there for the shot, but here's Mao Vieira and Juf instead. Back heels towards Joe Allen. Lovely ball out wide with the former Swansea man. Klaus to Juf. Juf inside. Shoots. Rainer saves and turns behind for a corner. Good stop there by the veteran. Retiring come the end of the season. Still 0 0 as Stoke going to search the early goal. Sobby's corner towards Shawcross. Cameron's header easily caught. Good stops down the right-hand side, turns Joe Allen, can he play it in as well to Ben Brereton, top scorer in the league, gets another, Ben Brereton does it again, Aston Villa 1, Stoke City 0, and what a sign in this guy has been from Nottingham Forest, I told you he was the player to watch this season, and he really has not let us down at all, Brereton with a finish, Bustos with the assist, and Aston Villa take the lead 17 minutes in, 13 goals in 21 games, fantastic return, this is why he doesn't play in the FA Cup, or for the most part in the Europa League because his Premier League form has just been too good for him to be tired playing in other competitions like Ben Brereton man what an absolutely brilliant signing as he's on the ball and rolls it off to Grealish he finds Jonathan Coggia Coggia looking for Ben can he get in behind Martins in the no but he has won a corner fair play to him his pace is electric in this team and uh, a corner here which Schupf is going to take whips into the centre looks for Zagadou who heads it just wide of the post Grealish with the interception, so but straight to Kevin team, Vimmer, and the ex-Spurs man, lost out to Kodji there, here. and now a quick chance they here, they Grealish to, to Brereton, can he do it again, oh, Brereton oh, to Grealish, oh, selfless oh, work oh, from Ben Brereton, oh, and oh, Jack Grealish oh, makes oh, it Aston Villa 2, Stoke City 0, oh, taking Clint Dempsey's oh, place oh, in the team oh, this oh, season, oh, and the oh, youngster oh, has oh, not oh, let us down, 2-0, and for Benny Boy bagging the assist as well, what a game he's having, no less than you expect really from our player of the season this year, stops on a dime, he drags three Stoke defenders towards him. That's just how dangerous he is. They have to watch him and stick tight to him. But he feeds it into Jackie Boy for his second of the season. Aston with a two, Stoke City nil. And as things stand, we are set for yet another win at home. Our 10th in 12 games in the Premier League. Villa Park is a fortress, baby. Harry Brown, Schupf. And now Grealish on the ball. He's got Brereton ahead of him, but instead finds Codgin. He'll look for Ben Brereton in behind Kevin Vimmer. Can he finish from a tight angle? Oh, he loves that chip on the left, but just over the bar. Still 2-0, but what a half for Aston Villa. What a half for Ben Brereton at the moment. What a half to the Villa Park faithful have been treated to. When we are at home, we fancy our chances against any team in the world. The whole end is jumping. Villa Park is rocking. Our home form throughout this series has been absolutely incredible. Klaus in trouble, Schupp wins it back, Brereton, it's free, mistake from Klaus, Schupp wins it back, you've got to love those high high work rates on our left wing back, and Ben Brereton does it again, a kiss for the camera lens, Aston with a free, Stoke City nil, an assist, and Ben bags yet another brace, call him Ben Brace Brereton, it's funny but I actually saw a comment from someone saying that they've got Brereton in their career mode, and he bags braces for them as well, it's, it's, it's what you get with Ben Brereton, it's the Ben Brereton and guarantee he will always bag those braces oh, because wins it in the air and finds Grealish and now Ross Barkley on the ball finds Brereton on for the hat-trick now Brereton turns shoots oh what a goal that would have been Green City fans to Kodja. Now Andre off the bench has Barkley with him. There's a man out wide there in Alessandro Schupf who really does deserve a goal. Alessandro Schupf round Joel Robles into the back of the net. 4-0 to Aston Villa. He deserves a goal. He's played so well today. And with seven minutes to go, that is going to secure it. Our fantastic home record is extended. Aston Villa 4, Stoke City 0. Probably no hat-trick for Ben Brereton, but Schupf teases Robles with the reverse step over, takes it round him and pops it into the bottom corner. He's been a brilliant signing for us this season. He's fourth in the Premier League for what is normally a wing-back in this team. With those high, high work rates, gets forward quite a lot, and we really like him as well. Club record signing for this season so far, but very good player and really worth the money. Now we just need to see out the clean sheet, lads. Just need to see out the clean sheet. Don't throw it away. 
Oh, for goodness sake. We're going to get the win, but our defensive woes continue. Mamma beer and Jufai's at home. Can Socrates come in now? We really need him. Well, that goal is not going to ruin the occasion. Final score, Aston Villa 4, Stoke City 1. Another win picked up against a struggling side in the Premier League right now. Of course, in charge of Paul Lamp, Mark Hughes in the game has been 16th place. And we will stay in 5th place despite the win. But a really good three points there as we stay in the chase with the top four. And one of the reasons we are still part of the chasing pack for a top four place is our home record this season. But another big reason is this young striker, Ben Brace Brereton, doing once again two goals and an assist with a 9.5. Very good performance, very good win. 4-1 the final score. But again, defensively, a little bit concerning. We just can't keep clean sheets. And actually, before the game, there was a bid for Jack Grealish, which I didn't notice initially. Newcastle put in a bit of 13.3 million, but forget it. Bagged an assist in that last game. Very good young talent. 78 rated, just 23 years old. The kid's going nowhere. But also, yet another bid for Dale Fry. Uh, Crystal Palace now want to take the young centre-back for 13.6 million. And again, we could cash in. Get a decent amount of money for him, but I'm thinking long term with this Aston Villa back line. Yeah, of course, right now we're not defending very well, that's true, but in the future, they're going to be absolutely fantastic and rock solid. So forget it. Fry's going nowhere. And as we are about to head into deadline day, there is yet another bid here. Who is it going to be for, I wonder? It's for Gallini, interestingly enough. Do you want to take him back to his native Italy? Bologna, uh, putting in a £4 million bid. Wasn't that where he was on loan last year? Was that the club? No, it was Atalanta. Just looked it up. But uh, £4 million was the bid. And uh, Galini's a decent backup goalkeeper to have. Uh, 74 rated, only 23 years old. He's not our contract in the summer, so um, it's another bid we get, which is over the market valuation. Oh, no, it's not. It's under the valuation. We're going to reject it anyway. Galini stays here. I, I like him as a backup. And we just see in the top left there, Pajac has just said, thanks, boss. And uh, the Croatian right back, he was complaining earlier on, uh, has said, really appreciate the odd run out in the team. Thanks, boss. No worries, bro. Continue to play like you did against Newcastle and you'll stay in the team. But this should be it for bids. We are now going to enter transfer deadline day. Our 10 hours left on the clock. We've already agreed Socrates, McCarthy and Kearney to... We've already agreed Socrates, Kearney and McCarthy to join us next season on the free transfer and sold Carlos Hill. But with £19 million in the budget and a little bit more perhaps with wage budget alteration, there's still time and still money for us to play with. Let's go for some more signings. Let's bring some more faces in. Transfer deadline day is here and I want to bring some more players in. Now right now our shortlist currently looks like this. Um, there's quite a few players we could sign on a free. Plus, we've got John Stones, who sadly don't have the overall on him yet, but we've scouted him for enough to know how good he is. We know how good John Stones is, obviously. Uh, I thought it could be quite a good signing based on our defensive woes this season, but don't know how much it'll cost. Um, at the moment, I'm thinking for, for new signings permanently. You guys have been raving about this guy for so long. Ezekiel Barco, valued at 17.5 million. I really would like to pick him up. Now he lost Carlos Seal. Could be a decent little impact sub off the bench. Very, very quick and stamina not bad for a 19-year-old at 73. You guys have been raving about him so much. We've never had him before. Can play through the middle as well. So I might try and make Barco my first signing in this club. Let's go for him. Now he's valued at 17.5 million. You've got to assume that a 79 rate is going to want between 1 to 2 million pounds for a bonus as well. Plus a big wage increase surely right now because he's not being paid much. So this is going to cost us quite a bit of money and I'm not entirely sure we'll be able to get him in this transfer window. We might have to wait until next season. But I will try and put in a bid and see what they say. And they say no 23.2 mil. The problem is we won't have enough to give him a contract plus a sign on bonus as well plus a 10% sell on clause we'll remove that and uh, we'll say no we can't offer that but what could we realistically get away with here maybe about 19 million pounds perhaps you well, maybe it's the bonuses that will be the problem really so we'll put 19 million pounds in we uh, we we'll wait and see what they say to that second bid and, and they're gonna ask for even more now 25.9 million which we definitely can't afford um, realistically I'd say 20 million pounds is as much as we could go to do you know what? Forget it. We can't sign him. He's, he's too expensive this season. I think we just have to leave it. Barco, definitely a long-term signing for this club. I do like the look of him a lot. You guys are raving about him a lot. But this season, just a little bit out of our price range. But definitely a target to keep in the shortlist, possibly for season three. We could have obviously included a sell-on clause that would have made the fee uh, not quite as expensive. But this guy has got a really bright future. And thus, I don't really want to do that. Because if we had to sell him at a later date then I don't want to see quite a lot of the profit go 
to Independiente. But uh, next man up, John Stones. Now, the reason I'm going after Stones is because our defence has been so bad this season. I think he'd be a really good signing as well. A young English defender that could really improve our back line. And based on our defensive worries, we need someone in now, I feel. I'm going to be cheeky and offer them James Chester, who this season has been a little bit hit and miss for the most part, and see what they say. They wanted Johnny Evans, so you never know. But uh, no, they want a midfielder, so forget that then. We'll just offer a straight transfer fee. That was never going to work. But I don't know how much Stones is worth, really. I'll be fine paying basically all of our budget for the guy because we need better defenders here. But I'll offer £13 million to begin with and see what Pep says to that. And he says, no, he feels like he's wasted his trip here. We won't entertain such a Derosa off of Stones. It's clear we can't reach an agreement based on the initiative offer, so we are putting out a goodbye. Well, that was a waste of time. All right, so I'm thinking next up we could possibly do a pre-contract. And based on the veterans we've had in this team doing so well, it will be so fun to have Angel Di Maria here next season. 30 years old now, can play on either side of the wings. Flair, long shot taker and, uh, taker and chip shot traits as well. Uh, with those five-star skills, we don't have a five-star skiller here yet, and I love to use skill moves, so that would be quite a good little signing for us. I wonder how much his contract demands are going to be, but Angel Di Maria, I would certainly take him on a free. We love to sign these veterans. So Angel Di Maria, the Argentines, you want to come back to the Premier League after your brief stint with Manchester United and sign for this club. Three-year deal is exactly what I was going to ask for as well, getting on quite well with the agent at the moment. I will disregard the release clause too. Now, 100 grand a week isn't actually that much for a player of Di Maria's quality. Uh, two big bonuses, though, which, of course, we will try and get down. So we'll remove that 15 gold bonus. We'll try and reduce the wages a little bit to 95 grand a week. And I'll try and get that sign-on bonus down if I can. So let's go to 900 grand. Um, whoa, I just noticed I was going to be paying him a million pounds a week. No chance, mate. Uh, what did I say? 95 grand, yeah. Oh, my maths is terrible. I, I can't even find a decimal point. But, uh, okay, 95 grand a week, 900 grand sign-on bonus. Three-year deal for Angel Di Maria. And they say no, 105 grand a week, 1.35 mil sign-on bonus. Okay, we'll keep the sign-on bonus where it is. But duck your wages down to 100 grand a week, and you've got a deal, uh, Angel. Let's see what you say to that one. Nope, they're playing hardball. 105 grand a week. But a five-star skiller, we don't have one. I love those skill moves. He's still got it 83 rated, three-year deal. He'll probably retire at Villa Park as well. I'm going to say yes. When you think about the veterans we've had in this team that have done so well for us, Yaya Torre, Clint Dempsey, Fernando Torres, and the list goes on. Angel Di Maria could be a number one as well. Di Maria signs for season three on deadline day, and the trend continues. It's the retirement home at Villa Park, and they're absolutely loving it. Angel Di Maria heading back to the Premier League to play for Aston Villa. I love making these signings, man. It's what makes career mode fun for me. Um, but I, I don't know why I'm making this comparison, but it just reminds me of when Robert Perez came to play for Aston Villa and he turned out to be pretty useless. Hopefully Di Maria will still prove that he's still got it at just 30 years old. And I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. And I'm really excited for him. We still got a lot of money left in our budget right now. And this guy is on the shortlist and we don't really need a striker. But based on the success we've had with Fabian Delph and Ashley Young coming back, I think it'll be pretty fun to bring back Christian Benteke as well. 81 rated, 28 years old. Koji this season has been quite hit and miss. And I think partnering him up top alongside Ben Brereton, a strong, stocky striker to play alongside the pacey young man, could be a decent little duo there. So Benteke... Let's try and bring him back to Villa Park. Come home, Christian. We tried in the summer. We couldn't get him. Let's see if we can get him in January. Now, I did see the chief exec suggest we could possibly get him for under the valuation, which is 15 million pounds. If we get Benteke 15 million pounds, that could prove to be an absolute steal. Um, and it's happened as well. It's happened. Roy Hodgson accepted straight off the bat, 15 million pounds for Benteke. That could prove to be an absolute bargain. Well, I'm stunned. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen. I, I thought he was going to say no, we'll accept £19 million pounds or £20 million pounds or something. But instead, said straight off the bat, yeah, £15 million pounds is fine. Now, he's on £69 grand a week. And if we can get him for around that sort of contract as well, even at 28 years old, that could be an absolutely fantastic signing for Aston Villa. So let's meet Christian. Let's meet the agent. Let's find out what he wants and if he's going to return to Villa Park. Now, I'm going to give him the important squad role to begin with, but sadly, Christian wants to be a crucial first team player. He wants to come back and stay in the first 11 on a consistent basis. So fair enough. Three year deal. We're going to try and bump it up to four years if we can. That'll take him up until he's 32 years old. And uh, they are totally fine with that. As for the release clause, nothing's going to get offered. 
and he wants a wage increase, but not a big one. Eight grand a week, plus two big bonuses there as well, which, oh, they really annoy me. I know that when you delegate a sign, you have to pay the bonuses, but I like doing the negotiations myself as it's a new feature this year. But we'll remove the gold bonus of 20, and we'll just offer that contract straight away, because I'm totally fine with that on a four-year deal. Crucial squad role, four-year deal, 77 grand a week, and a 1.2 mil sign-on bonus. Oh, Christian. Christian, I know you got a lot of money for leaving to Liverpool and then going to Palace as well, but come on, mate, that's that's a lot of money to ask for. There, we'll try and get him down to 85 grand a week, which again, I'll still be fine paying. I'll be fine paying 93 grand a week, but Christian says fine, 85 grand a week, and Christian Benteke is back at Villa Park. Di Maria is coming in next season. Benteke is coming in now. And that is an absolute steal, in my opinion. £15 million for Christian Benteke. That's a brilliant sign-in. Koji this season has been really, really hit and miss. Fernando's been okay in the games he's played, but Christian Benteke, 81 rated, one of the highest rated players in the team right now. And when you look at this guy's stats, I think as a support striker for Ben Brereton, we could get even more goals out of Benny Boy with him playing up top alongside him. 90 strength, 82 jumping, and some really good technical stats as well with 91 heading accuracy. Christian Benteke's in, four star weak foot, six foot three. What a sign, and that is welcome home, Christian Benteke. Oh, Christian Benteke. Back at Aston Villa, and based on the success of Delph and Ashley Young's return, let's just say I'm really excited for this. Wearing the number 35, forget that. We've got to give him 20, like he wore uh, at Villa Park in his first stint. And uh, yeah, Marcus Morgan's uh, an academy graduate. And, uh, and there he is, Christian Benteke, back at Villa Park. Delph, Young, and now Benteke returns. Turning to Aston Villa as well. Oh, I'm loving this team. I'm loving this team so much, man. It's it's fantastic. And that has basically got rid of all of our budget as well. 3.8 million remaining, 44 grand in the wage budget too. We could possibly try and make one more signing on a pre-contract. With Socrates and Di Maria joining next season, we found out this year... Oh, and McCarthy and Kearney, lest we forget. We found this out this year. When you have players coming in on pre-contracts, we know that our budget's not going to be quite as high. So whilst we could get Victor Ruiz, Lars Bender, Van der Hoen, or Johannes guys as well, I'm going to forget about it. No, nope, I'm totally fine with the four players coming in on freeze. And of course, Mr. Christian Benteke coming in as well. So that will do it for deadline day. We complete all of our business without one single advance. Deadline day is going to end and I could not be happier with how this January transfer window went. Oh, and I can just see in the bottom right there as well, Marco Essencial has joined Manchester City from Real Madrid for £91.1 million. What a bid that is, as, uh, as Manchester City strengthen their squad. Uh, we do have a bid here with three hours to go on deadline day. Who's it going to be for? Jonathan Kodje. How very interesting. After signing Benteke, Leeds thinking maybe he won't be in the first team. Maybe he'll want to leave. Benteke coming in. Kodji are probably going to be dropped to the bench, but despite saying he's in excellent form, he's not really been in excellent form this season. But we're still going to say no. I want to keep Kodji here. Last year's Championship Golden Boot winner still scores a few goals for us this season. Kodji is going to stay despite Benteke's arrival. Maybe we'll look to sell him next year, but for the time being, he's going to stay. So that is going to do it then. Transfer deadline day is over. We spent £15 million in the window, all on Christian Benteke, and of course signed four players on pre-contracts as well, whilst raising £17.7 million for the department of Carlos Heel. And I've got to say, what a January window that was. So dramatic. So much going on. But I am very happy with what we did in this January window. Strengthening for the future and strengthening our team heading into season three. And with Benteke coming home as well, with the returns of Young and Delph being so prosperous, let's just say I'm hoping that Christian Benteke will have just as big of an impact. And there he is, Christian Benteke, holding up the shirt, returning to Villa Park. How is he going to get on in his second stint here in front of the Aston Villa faithful. So deadline day is over. That will end it. And I think that is going to end today's episode of career mode as well, guys. And what an episode it was. Two fantastic wins. A really big signing in Benteke and Angel Di Maria coming in on a free transfer as well. What an incredible episode this was. But that will end today's episode of Korea Modo, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Korea Mode featuring Christian Benteke's debut very soon. What a signing. <laughs> I cannot wait for that, man. He's so good. Oh, wait, hang on. Um, oh, didn't I say I was going to do the Academy update?
I'm pretty sure I did, didn't I? Okay, we'll do that and then we'll end the episode there. It's going to be a big bumper episode of Korean Mode today. You guys are being treated and then some. Oh, no. But I don't want to end on a negative. Training injury? Is that going to be Benteke for six months? Oh, it's Brereton, but just for a two-day injury. Heart and mouth moment there. I saw Ben Brereton's name. But two days, that's that's fine. That's fine. He'll miss the Fulham game, but he's going to play anyway. Uh, and there's Galfi in the academy, uh, the 17-year-old as well. So there you go. Bit of an anticlimax again in that one. But that wins today's episode of career mode. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like. Much love. All that jazz. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon. That was amazing. What an episode.